Hi, we're going to try messing around with Flash and get into motion graphics. And the exercise I want you to try playing around with is to take your name and animate it using some uh, motion graphics techniques and see if you can learn a little bit about tweening along the way and principles of motion graphics. So I'm going to try to do this quickly. Remember, you can pause and rewind if you need to cover something in greater detail. So I'm going to get started with an Action Script 2 file, and I am going to change this right away to a more conventional 800 by 450 pixel size so that I get something that is going to look a little bit better on the screen. And I'm also going to give this thing a black background so I can hide some stuff later on. And to give it a black background, I'll choose that black color, grab a rectangle, and resize it. I want to encourage my students to select the object and get used to using the properties to resize things and locate things. If I type 0, 0 as its location, this rectangle is now right in the top left corner. And if I change the width to match my document size, 800 by 450, I'm going to get a black background that's going to fit this thing just about perfectly. And I'm going to change this name, or name this layer, background, or background, or background, and I'm going to lock it and add another layer. And now I'm going to put my names up here. And I'll try to do this fairly quickly. So I'm going to do a simple version of it. A um, little bit of typography goes a long way. I'm going to choose a white color for now. You can always modify these things later. And look at the properties of my text as it's coming out here. And uh, Under paragraph, I'll try to center this. And the size of this thing, let's see, it's right says it's 12 points, so I want to max that out. I'm going to make that about 120. So it fits the space. It's a pretty big canvas. And in typing the name, I want to encourage you to try using a little bit of typography with this. Let's choose a font that we can play around with a little bit. Uh, surprisingly, Arial has a lot of options. So I'm going to go choose an Arial font like this. And I'm going to choose to make the last name, uh, instead of regular, I'll make it black. Beyond bold is black. So it's got a little more interesting character to it. And I'm going to go really simply with this. Something else that kind of looks good as you're doing this stuff is to change other things up. You know, the color of it. Break it up a little bit. I'll have some that's gray and some that's white. And so it just kind of makes it look a little more interesting. Now, I'd like to align this right to the center of the stage, too. So it's a lot of tricks you get in here. I'm going to go see if I can find my align palette. I like docking these things so I can use them again later. And I want to align this object to the center and to the middle of the stage. So it's in pretty good shape there now. And a file at this point in time, file save as. Save your work. It's an awfully good idea and give it a meaningful name. I always suggest your last name, first initial, and then whatever this thing is. In this case, it's name motion graphic. We'll save that. Okay, go. So we're all set to get started with this animation stuff. First off, let's decide how long this is going to be, and I would suggest a five second animation would be good. At 24 frames per second, five times 24 would take you to 120 frames. I hope you can do that without a calculator. It's handy. So now we have a background that's going to last us for 120 frames. And if you want, I suppose you could extend this one out there so you can see all the way along, there's our graphic. Okay, looks pretty, not a lot of, lot of life to it. There are three rules to making something tween, and tweening is the most efficient way to mess around with this. So the first rule is whatever you animate, in this case the name, the name must be turned into a symbol first. An F8 or modify convert to symbol is going to let us turn this into a motion clip, or sorry, a movie clip, and I'm just going to call it name for now. And it'll show up in our library. I don't have the library open yet, so you know what? I think I'll dock that up there too. Grab the library, put it up there with properties, and there's our name uh, symbol. This here is referred to as the, the instance of this symbol, and now it's time to make the, the motion happen. We've got to decide along those five seconds when we want things to happen. I'm going to start with the easiest thing. I'm going to say, let's have it not start right away. I select that keyframe, I let go of it, and then I click and drag it, and I can put it at the 24th frame. So I have one second of nothing happening, and then it pops into existence. Okay. What I'd like to have happen is I'd like to have it slide in from the right. So now I have to decide, okay, how long should it take to slide in from the right? Tell you what, let's make it another second. So I'm going to go over to the 48th frame, right about there, and hit F6, and that will give me a second keyframe that has the same contents as this. And what that is, is it's the instance. 
this is an instance of that symbol, and this is an identical instance, same properties. Most especially, that little registration point is in the same place, and you have to be careful of that. So the second rule of tweening is you take the symbol and make sure anything that moves gets its own layer. And right now, this is the only thing that I have moving, and it's the only thing in this layer, so we're good. That last rule of tweening is that these two keyframes are identical in the contents, but we're going to change the properties of one of these two instances. And in between, I'm going to right mouse click and create a classic tween. And the thing I'm going to change in terms of properties is I'd like it to end up here. This is good. But I want it to start off stage to the right. So I'm going to start sliding it to the right. And I'll hold the shift key down so it stays exactly parallel. And I'll put it over there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's tweening. If we went control and tested the movie, you've got yourself an animation. Now, that's the start of it. Motion graphics, we're going to start making this start to look a little more sophisticated. One of the first ways to do that as we start playing around with the tween is to go into the properties for the tween. When we go into properties, whatever we click on, we see the properties for. This is the properties of the instance. If we click on the tween, these are the properties of the tween. And one of the best ways to start classing up the joint is to look at the properties for easing under tween. And you can do it with this number, but this pencil works a whole lot better. Easing is having a little acceleration and deceleration. To have this thing accelerate in, I'm going to click its opening point. This is the time-space relationship. I want it to move a little bit at first, but then speed up. And I also want it to decelerate at the, at the other end. When it gets into position, I want it to slow down. So just by doing this, tweaking this thing a little bit, and giving it a curve, it's going to ease in and it's going to ease out. And if we test our movie, it now looks like this. And it's going to keep recycling and going over and over. OK. So we're starting with a really simple animation. You know what? I'm going to add something else to the other end of this thing. At the end of the animation, it'd be nice if it got into a full loop and faded out at the end. Now, you could fade out this element, but we might have other elements that we want to add later. To fade things out, I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to call it Curtain. And I'm going to borrow that background that I used over here. I'm going to take that background here. It's in the bottom layer. Tell you what, I'm going to turn it into a symbol too. I'll hit F8, and I'm going to call it Curtain. The name is not important. But now it lives in the library, so I've got another version of that curtain. And I'm going to put it up here so at the very end of this thing, I want the curtain to show up and tween into, into opacity, into a visibility. So I'm going to go to about frame 100. And I'm going to hit an F7. And what I want to do is put the curtain in place. So I'll just drag it in place like this. And if I put it in the wrong place, I can go to the properties. And I could, clicking on it, come on, properties. There you are. I closed it. Click it and make sure it's at 0 and 0. And it's still the exact same size. So I've got a curtain exactly covering over everything underneath. There's the curtain on the top layer. There's the name. There's the background. To make this thing fade out, I'm going to just do another tween. My rules, I'm obeying. This curtain, when I click on it, I can see it's an instance of the symbol called curtain. It's in its own layer, nothing else in there. And then I will hit F6 to make an ending keyframe and a right mouse click and create a motion tween in between. But here's the cool thing about this. Tweening not only lets you move or change the property of location, it can also change any other property that you can see under here including color effects. And what I'm going to do with this instance, this instance is going to be identical to this one, but I'm going to change its property. So its color effect for alpha, which is opacity, is going to be set to start at zero. So when I go from here to here, there's no change. But as I move further, it's going to get more and more opaque until we get to this point where its opacity is basically solid. Uh, I could put that in there and say, oops, that kind of goofed up make sure it is solid at the end. I didn't have to do that, but just showing what we're doing is we're changing its property of opacity. So now the animation looks a little more complete. It eases in, and then it fades out, and then it repeats itself. So I'm going to add another layer of sophistication to this. Holy smokes, this has been 10 minutes of video already. There's other properties we can mess around with. Uh, I'm going to lock this curtain layer just so I can't mess around with it wrong, the wrong way here. Um, something else we might want to do is 
get an, a motion graphic in here so that the uh, or an effect in here so that we have a little bit of blur. The fastest that this name moves is probably about this point, somewhere near the middle, right about here. So I'm going to go right to that point. I'm going to hit F6, and I'm going to change the instance here with another property change, uh, not a color effect. I'm going to go down to Filters. And for this particular instance, at this point where it's moving its fastest, I'm going to introduce, under Filters by clicking Add New Filter, I'm going to add a blur. Now blurs are nice. You can go in there and dial in a nice nasty blur for yourself there. A motion blur would be one where it blurs horizontally but not vertically. And if you unlock the X and the Y, you can set a value of zero to the Y blur. So it only blurs side to side. Now the blur may not kick in you might notice it's going to go away until we get to that one keyframe and then it goes away again, which is not what we're looking for. But I notice when you click on the keyframes, it sort of pushes the blur filter onto the other instances. And suddenly that blur goes back to zero here. If I click on this one, click on it, I can see it's going to go back to zero there. So it is going to tween the blur, get blurriest in the middle, and then get less blurry. And the results look like this. Just a little bit classier still. Last level we're going to take this thing to for this tutorial, and this is going longer than I expected it to, but I think it's worth it. By the way, it's a good idea to hit save every now and again. Uh, stuff from stuff, a principle of animation that makes things, or motion graphics that makes things look a little bit more interesting still, is to have a place that these things come from. So I'm going to make a new layer on top here, and I'm going to call this cursor. And even under the cursor, I'm going to make another layer. You'll see why in a bit called mask. So we'll start with the mask. And with the mask layer, well, all I want to have it look like is that this thing doesn't come off the side of the stage, that it actually comes from a cursor over here and kind of pops out from behind there. So I'm going to draw that cursor now. Let's see. Uh, white. Rectangle ought to do it. And where I want that cursor to appear, I'll tell you what, I'll just kind of draw it. It's got to be about big enough to hold all the contents of what's coming out of it. So that descender and that ascender up there, okay. Go to my cursor layer here, hit F7, so I've got a new empty keyframe to draw it in. Again, I want to keep everything separate into their own layers. And I'll draw a cursor. When I say a cursor, it's like Pong. Right about there. That ought to do. And I want to make it look like this is coming out from behind it. So to make it come out from behind it, well, what I'll do is I'll put a little mask underneath it with another F7. And I'll change my rectangle. Whoops, nope. I'll change it to a different color. And that color will match the background. And because it's underneath, I hope it's going to draw this where I want it to. Something like that ought to do the job. Ah, good. So you get the idea. The mask is just blotting out whatever's underneath it. And the cursor's on top. I can lock that mask. So now... Whoops. Oh yeah, that cursor just kind of appears out of nowhere. Like that. I could move that cursor and have it start at the very beginning, have it be there for the whole duration, just by grabbing its keyframe and moving it to the beginning. So now it looks like this. Ooh, that didn't work. Oh yeah, the mask has to stay up there all the time too. I better move that keyframe to the beginning. Test. Ah, that looks better. Getting there. But with that cursor, one more opportunity that we have here is that the cursor could animate into existence, like stuff from stuff or stuff from nothing. So I'm going to click on that cursor, it's selected it, and if I want to animate it, its scale, its size, its opacity, any of that stuff, I have to turn it into a symbol first. First rule of tweening, turn it into a symbol with an F8, give it a name. Next, make it, put it on its own layer. I do that automatically, so it's already got its own layer. Choose a duration and hit F6 to give it flanking keyframes, that's the third rule. And right mouse click in between to create a classic tween. And I know we want it to be that big before the text comes in, but I want it to start small. So I'm going to use the Transform tool, and I'm going to squash it down nice and small like this. So now the cursor kind of blinks into existence like this. And after it's blinked into existence and done its job, I'm going to hit F6. I think I'll have it blink out of existence too. A couple of keyframes, a right mouse click, a classic tween, and one more shrink down to nothing. Whoops. Make sure I shrink it down to nothing. 
Now if I test the movie, got a little motion graphic stuff going on. Uh, I don't like that cursor sitting there until it fades out at the end. So you know what? When it fades out at the end, when it shrinks down here, I'm going to hit F7. An empty keyframe will make it go away completely. And I think that just about does it. So it took 15 minutes to do this. Um, there's so much more that we can do to it, but it's just the elements of tweening and a little bit of motion graphics and trying to make something that looks interesting. Give it a try for yourself and be on the lookout for the other principles of motion graphics that'll make it look even better still. Good luck!